Lastly, I'll turn off these components for now. Maybe except the loft. I'll turn all of these out. I'll copy all these three curves and move it across. This time, I'll be using control point loft, which also equally requires three different curve parameters. In this case, I've got three curves. You could, again, create more intermediate curves in between two end curves. So I copy that three times, define it from right to left, select the one in the middle and select the one at the end. So let's type control point, control point loft. So you will immediately see the difference between the two different Loft, curve, loft surface types. Okay, so the second one, second loft, doesn't actually require the surface go through the midsection, which works exactly the same as this curve, if you take this curve as example. So these two ends are touching at each end, whereas the, the midpoint of the curve doesn't really meet. And in fact, that is all controlled by this control point. And this gives a bit more gentle curvature. Ra rather, this is a bit more extreme. So if you move it up, respond to, sorry, if you move the middle one, if it will respond to the location of this location of the mid curves. You can in fact, again, create, decide to create more rips in between the end curves. It really totally up to the designer. So I'll, I'll leave it there for describing what this control point loft does and I'll show you other most, com most commonly used technique when it comes to either envelope design or paneling it is commonly used but this time I'm not going to use a paneling tool for demonstrating what a surface can a surface component can do so surface components can do so I'll hide this the loft next to it, turn off the preview, and you'll have to define the degree, I'll define 2, so it doesn't really matter whether you define it or not, but it probably matters later on when you add more components to it. So let's, cre to create, to give the object sitting on, it can be 2D patterns sitting on this surface, it can be, th it can be 3D patterns, 3D object that sits on the surface. We will divide the surface equally using ice trim and then place the object on each cell. Then you can increase the you can increase the depth or the size of the cell and that will the each component, each object will stretch as the cell increase or reduce. So let's create the object that will be placed on top of the surface first. I use simple, two simple geometry uh, shapes that are commonly used in Grasshopper, which are circle and polygon. So polygon. So I'll define the size of polygon. It doesn't really matter how big they are. They're all going to be relative to the actual size of the, sorry, size of the surface. So I'll decrease that. So if you go to the center point, you will see how big they are. So if you increase it, the gap between the curve and uh, curve and the polygon sort of reduces. And if I loft it, and you will see these two are connected and created a surface. And I'll extrude it to give a three-dimensional depth. and use Z to extrude and I'll cap this so you immediately see that this has got 
this becomes a 3D object now. So let's type morph surface. Surface morph. Let's take a look what it needs to have. So it requires geometry, requires reference, requires surface. If I take this surface directly to this surface, all it will do is it will place this, well, nut shape directly onto entire surface. Whereas what we want is we want to segregate this and place this object individually, locally on each cell. So to do so, we'll have to divide this surface. There are a number of ways of dividing it, but I'll use ISO trim and use this time use a bit quicker way of getting the domain of the surface divide domain square and it will immediately generate the uh, the domain value of that surface and you can divide that in unv direction and one thing that we will have to do is connect that to domain because this again, I mean, we don't, this time we don't have to reparametize just because it's taking all the value that came from the surface, right? And then this component will allow you to create the domain value from the starting point, which is zero typically, and the length of X and Y, sorry, U and V. And you segregate it by this count, you know, the, the, the slider number, and that feeds to domain. And this we know where the geometry is, so that connect there and the reference is the size of this object that to get that you use bounding box which will define the overall entire shape of this object and that goes to reference and surface we know that surface is this and UMV we can get the UMV, the true UMV from analyzing this surface, but if we re-parameterize this and I'll simplify it, and you'll take a, let's take a look what it gives you. And you can immediately see that it's generated all the surfaces and it been it doesn't really give you the num numeric data, but it has reparametized all the surface value from zero to one. And we know the domain is now construct domain. You can start it from, you can use zero to one domain, which start from zero to one. That goes to UMV. And this W defines the, sorry, defines the, you can choose to undo it. You can define the height of the, the three dimensional morph geometry, which I'll give five for now. And this has now placed that object on the surface. You can increase it to give more depth of the object. I'll move it around. And the depth has increased. And you can decrease it to one. you immediately notice that the object depth has decreased to one. And you can also further segregate it by changing the UMV count, or reduce the segregation down to five. That changed the number of cells in that UMV direction. And of course, this will respond to the location of this central curve and each end curve as well. So this is it. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time. Thank you.